Lord. Um, so glad to be with you all um, today. Um, did y'all have a good day today? Yes, we did. It, that, it was was that was slow. That was slow. We fighting allergies over here, Siobhan. Ooh. Okay. Okay. But we did, though. The weather is changing and it's getting cold, for real cold. Mm -hmm. At least here in Tennessee, it is freezing. <sighs> So yeah, it's I do understand. Um, let us pray. Let us pray. Okay. Oh, Father God, we are so grateful for today. So grateful that you've been present with us, Father. Even um since last night, just in our time of prayer, Father, I just felt you with us. And for that, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for your promises. I'm grateful that you are a keeper. Ah, wow, God, you're a sustainer. It is absolutely you that holds us together. Um, when everything else is falling down all around us, oh God, you are holding us in the palm of your hand. And for that tonight, Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise. Uh, hallelujah for your goodness. Father, I pray that you would speak to us loud and clear tonight. Let us have an awesome time in sharing. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a safe place for us to gather and just share with each other about life and share with each other about um, the solution to the to challenges of life, which is you. And for that, we are grateful. Father, we honor you. We bless you. We give you praise and we give you thanks. Allow your word to be food to our very bones. Father, that we may grow and um, be nourished and we may be strong in our faith. We love you and we bless you. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Um, man, I am so, so glad. I, of course, y'all know I've been really pondering about, man, what are we gonna share about? I know come January, Virginia, we are moving into intimacy, okay? And I'm really glad about that because I have some ideas. Um, hey, Steph, I'm so glad to see your face. You didn't leave me out here by myself. Um, I'm so um, glad and grateful to, um, just as I'm pondering the things that I feel like the Lord is, will have us to do and people that'll come and share with us and that kind of thing. So I'm excited about that. But tonight is almost like a tap into it a little bit. Um, and so I'm glad about that because I've been praying hard, like, Lord, where are we going? What are we doing? What's our next um, that you desire to share with us and to teach us. Um, so as I awakened this morning, what was on my mind is Psalm 111. And I have been pondering this probably two weeks ago and I went and read it and I'm like, okay, Lord. But then I, um, last week, I just was led to go in a different direction. And so I want us to read and share Psalm 111 tonight. And we're just gonna go through it. And really tonight is gonna be a night of reflection a night of rehearsal, a night of restoration, um, gathering of peace, God's peace, keep gathering our perspective on things. Um, just in our prayer time last night, man, I just felt like mm -hmm. a press um, in my heart and in my spirit, just um, with all that we're dealing with. And I, I feel personally, I don't know about you guys, I feel like Sometimes I can be so overwhelmed with life that I lose focus. I literally lose sight that God is with me and he's for me. How do I know I lose sight? Because I become scared. I become anxious and I don't deal with anxiety. Um, I become nervous about my tomorrow and next week and next year and next month, days that I haven't even seen before. And, um, as we were sharing last night, I just felt like it was like a, almost like a alignment, like, no, get, get back to where you need to be. Focus on the Lord. He's with you and he will give you peace. He will give you peace. He said, he'll give you peace. Whose mind is stayed upon him. And as we've talked about before, if you lose God's peace, that means your mind is probably on other things because his promises are true. So we'll talk about that. I want to start tonight with asking you this question tell me today and just today alone um maybe even in the in the last few hours tell me something that you would say man 
God is amazing because of this. Or you can say it as, I am thankful to God because of this. Let me give you a little bit to think about that. Just today. Don't go to last week. Don't go to last month. Don't go to last year today. Take a moment. Hi, everybody. Um, I don't need a moment. My name is Charlotte Wheaton, and uh, I'm Reba's cousin. She invited me. Hey, Charlotte. Um, how are you? Hi. I'm you came in with well, a little fire. You. you came in with a little fire, Charlotte. <laughs> thank you so well, much. Well, because I have a lot to be grateful. Um, today, I got a call, and I'm grateful for God. Uh, because today I got a colonoscopy and it came out normal. Yay, so, uh, yeah. And so I'm just grateful that I'm bringing in 24 with a, a great health and, uh, you know, learning the word more and getting closer to God. So yes. today was awesome for me. Thank you so Thank much for sharing great. that. Amen. And thank you. Where are you from? Tell us where you're from. So I'm from Los Angeles, born and raised in Los Angeles, California, and I moved to Houston, Texas in 2005. Okay. Okay. So I'm a official Houstonian. <laughs> awesome. 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 We're so glad that you're here. Um, Reba's probably already told you, we're just a safe environment of women. Um, our commonality is that we're women, but it's also that we are all striving to live for God and we're all in different places in our walk with God and that's okay, but it's good to be in a community where you know that you can be challenged, you can be loved most of all, um, and that you're safe. So yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Who else? We got a small group tonight, so this should be easy. Yeah. Come on, Steph, I hey, see this is, Yeah. Um. And I know it sounds silly, but we were eating dinner before Bible study and I was taking something out to the trash can, you know, as we were cleaning stuff up and I literally just kind of just paused out there in the dark and put my head down. And I was just like, Lord, I am so grateful that for just a few moments, like all seven of us, my whole family was in the kitchen at the same time, you know, it probably wasn't for more than 15 minutes, but we were all there we we're all like moving about, chattering, cleaning, doing whatever, but it doesn't happen all of the time. But I just kind of sat there and paused and thanked him for that, those moments, because it's a, I'm grateful. Yeah. Don't take it for good. granted. That's take good. It for granted. That's good. Yeah. You're already in the lane. Look, look at God. <laughs> Go mm -hmm. ahead, Virginia. Uh, I am just thankful because he woke me up this morning. Hmm. that 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 is that is it um and i say that this is something that i am thankful for every morning because my hmm. mother went to sleep and didn't wake up hmm. so that is <laughs> that is my that is my prayer that is what i am truly truly thankful for every single day because she wasn't much older than i am now yeah. She was only like 56. Yeah. yeah. So I just thank the Lord every day. So that that is that's a blessing in itself. Yes, it is. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Yes. Reba, you there? Yes, you know, I have to unmute and mute because my children, but um... we don't hear your kids, <laughs> so you're fine. Um, I am also grateful for health. Um, you know, just you guys know all the little stuff with the kids and being in school and all, all that. So just that, yeah, just that I'm encouraged and um and that we're all we're all healthy. Yes. That's a good thing too. Yeah. Um, what am I thankful for? I am thankful today that I'm actually in my right mind and I still know that God is God. I still know that God is God and I'm grateful mm. for that. Um, Amen. I've been having some really challenging days. Um, days of like, what is all this about? What is all this for? God, why? Why are we doing this? And today I got up, had my prayer time with husband 
And I just was like, I'm going to do my hair. And I did my hair and Mm -hmm. I just felt like, "Ah, I'm just, I'm good. Like, God, you're good to me. You're good to me. Um, So in the midst of that, we're going to go to, oh, Deanna, you want to jump on? We're just saying, I am grateful to God for fill in the blank, or I'm thankful for fill in the blank. Just think about today. What are you thankful or grateful for today? And then we're going to jump into the scripture. You there? All right. She'll probably jump in. I'm going to go to the, uh, to the scripture. Um, man, this scripture really blesses my heart. Uh, Y'all see my scripture? Yes. Yes, yes, we can. Okay. I know I get lost on this screen because stuff just gets popping up all over the place. Okay. Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Uh, man, it's not a long verse, but it's powerful. So I'm going to read it in the CSB, which is the Christian Standard Bible, okay? And then I want to also read it in the Message Bible, all right? Um, And then we'll kind of walk through it. I have a couple things that I just want to highlight. You guys can chime in um, as you see fit, all right? Hallelujah. I will praise the Lord with all my heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The Lord's works are great, studied by all who delight in them. All that he does is splendid and majestic. His righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has provided food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works by giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his instructions are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever and acted in truth and in in uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. His name is holy and awe-inspiring. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his instructions have good insight. His praise endures forever. You could just like breathe that in. It's so tangible to me. Mm -hmm. Ah, Let's read it in the message really quickly. And I'm going to go through it. It says, hallelujah. I give thanks to God with everything I've got. Wherever good people gather and in the congregation. God's works are so great, worth a lifetime of study, endless enjoyment, splendor and beauty mark his craft. His generosity never gives out. His miracles are his memorial. This God of grace, this God of love, he gave food to those who fear him. He remembered to keep his ancient promise. He proved to his people that he could do what he said. Hand them the nations on a platter, a gift. He manufactures truth and justice. All his products are guaranteed to last. Never out of date, never obsolete, rust proof. Woo! All that he makes and does is honest and true. He paid the ransom for his people. He ordered his covenant kept forever. He's so personal, my God, and holy, worthy of our 
respect. The good life begins in the fear of God. Do that and you'll know the blessing of God. His hallelujah last forever. As I'm reading this, first thing pops out to me is what we just said. God deserves endless thanks. Mm -hmm. Tonight, we're not going to kind of rush through. This is a very simple verse. It's almost self-explanatory. But I want us to take a moment in the midst of our busyness, all the things that we're doing, our minds on a thousand things. And even now, although we're in a gathering and we're talking about God, we're probably most of you are doing something else. I want us to take a moment and allow the word of God to filter all the madness to saturate you and to bring you peace. Give thanks to God with everything you've got. What does that look like for you? In the midst of your busyness, what does that look like for you? Because God deserves endless thanks. Some of us are complainers. Something happens. It may not even be bad. We just are in our little mood about it. And we'll spend majority of the amazing day God has given us complaining versus giving thanks with everything we've got. The psalmist writes, wherever good people gather. He's basically saying, wherever I got an audience, I'm going to talk about the goodness of God. Wherever there's space for me to share. If it's in the church, in the congregation among saints, or, where, or if it's just around a, a group of people, I am going to give God thanks with everything I've got. Ooh, man. Charlotte jumped right in. She was like, I don't even need a whole lot of time. I just, I already know what I'm, I'm good today. I'm thankful. She was giving energetic praise to God for all that he had done in her sight. Amen. Can you say that today? Can you say that? Or are you lackluster? Because as we keep reading, the, the, the writer is going to give you a list of things of why this should be in your life as a believer. He's going to give you a roll call of what God has done in order for you to be on, automa on automation with thanking him. And I'm going to tell you, if you can get to a place where you can thank God automatically instead of allowing some of the things that come out of your mouth and in our minds to happen and transpire, peace will be your consistent way of living mm -hmm. versus being in and out, up and down. He said, God's works are so great. They're worth a lifetime of study. Endless enjoyment. He's like, God has done so much just in the creation alone that you can spend your lifetime marveling at his mighty hand. Have you all ever just written down from when you were a child to now? the things that God have done that only he could have done. 
God encouraged the Israelites to take out the stones of remembrance, to, to take stones of remembrance when he parted the Red Seas on their behalf in the face of their enemies. And he saved them just like he told them he would. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, about him being a promise keeper, never failing, coming through on what he said. But he told him, he said, take stones of remembrance because I never want you to forget who I am, what I've done, what I've brought you through, how I've made ways for you. Because when we are in the times like we are now, where there's challenges every single day, it seems, where the world is going crazy, war is going on, the, the economy is up in the air, the government is going crazy, our children act like they can't hear nor listen, nor do they want to. They seem like they're going farther away from the things that we've taught them of the Lord. When all of that is happening, God says, revisit what I've already brought you through what I've already saved you from. Revisit <laughs> my works because they are great and they are worth you studying them so that you don't forget them. Man, splendor and beauty mark his craft. It's like everything he's made, it is beautiful. beautiful. Including you. Because some of us don't understand the disrespect that we give to God when we have issues with the way we look, with our size, with our eyes, with our lips. Some of us got problems with everything, our hair. But God says, everything I've made, it's splendid. It's marvelous. It's wonderful. Including you. Including you. I'll say that again. Hallelujah. His generosity never gives out. Never gives out. Even when we think we think we're getting the short end of the stick. I don't know about y'all, but I can say that, man, with some of the things that I've had to navigate um, in this journey. And I know I've said it like, wow, I'm doing this for you. <laughs> Why is it so hard? <laughs> Lord, you told me to do this. Why is this so challenging? And he always reminds me through his word. I told you many would be the afflictions of the righteous, but I'll deliver you from every one of them. That's his promise. And he does, y'all. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I actually feel a bit crazy because... I can get up in the morning and I'm overwhelmed with the situation and the scenario. And then I feel crazy because by the evening time, God has already resolved it. And I've actually said to myself, you were crying for nothing. Why didn't you just wait for him? Mm. Why didn't you just believe him? God makes true on what he tells us, guys. He's here. He's present. He's unfailing. And he's generous. Man, is he generous. If he wasn't, we wouldn't have half the things that we have, including our good brains. God's generous. Mm -hmm. His miracles are his memorial. His miracles, think about that, are his memorial. They're not like what we went through um, a few months ago where folks just decided like, look, I'm gonna take these statues down. These memorials, mm -mm, we don't wanna see it anymore. We don't believe, we don't wanna believe it's true. We're just gonna take these things down and we're gonna remove them from history. Uh-uh, 
When God does a miracle, it is an eternal memorial. I mean, every time someone looks at you, every time somebody thinks about you, they have to honor the God that healed you, that changed you, that saved you, that turned your life around because it was a miracle. We all were on our way to a burning, burning hell. Devastation was our future. And God himself got our attention. Some of us are so headstrong. We were, we were willing to go. We didn't care. But God miraculously touched our minds and our hearts and caused us to respond to his, his calling toward us, his love toward us. Woo. That's good. Hallelujah. This God of grace, this God of love. He gave food to those who fear him. He remembered to keep his ancient promise. He proved to his people that he could do what he said. Hallelujah. Yahweh makes good on his word. He's not like us. He's not like us. Some of us do need to know that, that God's not like us. Mm -hmm. He's not even like, he's not like you. You'll tell somebody you're going to do something. And then you change your mind in the next five minutes. God's not like that. He makes good on what he told you he would do. Popcorn. What's something God told you he would do and he's done it already? Anybody? Come on. It don't take that long. Come on. Tell me something God told you he would do and he's made good on it already. That he will never leave me nor forsake me. Come on. And I feel him daily. Come on. Mm -hmm. We don't have to hesitate on this. Mm -hmm. Who else? Tell me something. Come on, quickly. Tell Heal me. Heal my something. family. He healed your family. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Come on. He restores and redeems my family. Restored and redeemed your family. God makes good on his promises. His promises are not um, what we, whatever we think that they are. God doesn't work that way. We can't just come up with something and then pray and ask God to stamp his approval on it. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. God lays out that which he desires for you, his daughter. It is your job to get in his face, to hear him, to settle down your heart so that you'll know which way to go. He said he'll direct your path. He said he would lead you down paths of righteousness. So if you consult him and if you look to him, God will show you which way to go. And your job is just to obey. Just to obey. Some of us need to take the moment and say, lift your father, forgive me because I did not obey you. I didn't obey you, not today. And that moment of disobedience caused me to miscalculate what you told me. And I held you to something that you never told me to do. I held you to something. You didn't say that. You didn't say you were going to do that. Mm 
I was talking to someone not too long ago. They were talking about their marriage, like, hmm, God didn't tell me to do that. I did that. The good part about it is God is able to restore you even in the midst of it. But we don't frustrate God's grace. Mm -hmm. We earnestly seek him with our whole hearts. And we wait upon him to answer. And once he gives us the instruction, the peace of God comforts us and covers us. We do not delay in doing what God's mm -hmm. instructed us to do. Because he's going to always come through on his part. Will you come through on your part for God? What's that thing? What's that thing he's been asking you to do? He's been saying, give that up. Change that. Go over there. Teach here. Say that. Sing here. Maybe some of us, he's been saying, stop saying that. <laughs> Whatever it is. What is that thing? Make good on your promise. Because God's always going to make good on his. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hand, okay, so he proved to his people that he could do what he said. Hand them the nations on a platter. A gift. He manufactures truth and justice. A lot of us say it this way, like God is not a man that he should lie. Comes out of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Right? But this goes just a little bit deeper and says he can't, he can't lie because he creates truth. Like it comes from him. He's the manufacturer. It originates with him. Truth and justice. Mm -hmm. I think this is my favorite line out of this whole text. Mm -hmm. All his products are guaranteed to last. Because we have, as women, if we don't know nothing else, we know products. <laughs> <laughs> we know products. We know quality and we know it is not quality. But we don't even have to ask that question with our God. Whatever he does, it's guaranteed that it will last. Mm -hmm. Everything else is going to fade away, but not God and his word. Not what he's established. Not what he's established. Mm -hmm. It's going to last. He tells us that even about our kids, he says, train them up in the way they should go. And when they are old, they shall not depart from it. It's going to last. I remember being shocked because my grandma, my grandma had Alzheimer's or dementia. I don't know if they're the same, but I know they're similar, right? And um, where you your mind, you lose your mind sometimes. They, and I don't say lose your mind, but some you lose your memory, actually. Um, different parts for different people. Like my grandma, she would remember a lot of things from when she was younger, but she wouldn't remember like the current moments. Um, but I remember that. Like, so you go there and she may not know- That's her dementia. Dementia, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, she may not know her kids. She may not know, you know what I mean? Like she may not know- um, whatever, whatever you ask her, she, she would be taught, like she might start conversations and not really, um, they don't seem like they're relevant to whatever the moment is. And I remember that, but one thing that she would do that amazed me, if you start singing hymns, mm -hmm. scripture, songs of Zion, she would know all the words. And she would sing them. And I thought that was amazing. And I remember telling my mom, I'm like, oh my God, because I was younger. I'm like, oh my God, what the word of God says is true. God's word will last. Amen. She can't recall nothing else, but she knew God's word. 
To me, that pushes us over into right now why you have your good mind, why you are conscious, why you understand what's going on in your day to day. Are you filling your heart and your mind with what will last? Or are you drenching it with stuff that will fade away? Your latest reality TV show. Pondering on things that get on your nerves. Watching the news all day. Watching your latest sitcom, whatever that is. Binging on TikTok and Facebook and Netflix. We're in such a, tr a crazy yet tremendous time where you have to be preparing yourself for the days ahead. It's not a game, y'all. We don't do this part-time. <laughs> you can't believe in God part-time. It's all in or you're all out. He don't deal with anything else. Lukewarm, he said, I spit you out my mouth. I don't want that. Are you taking time filling yourself, filling your days, filling your house, pouring into your children, speaking over your husband, things that will last? And all of that starts and ends with God's marvelous word. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. his products are guaranteed to last it never out is never out of date never obsolete and it's rust proof man all that he makes and does is honest and true. He paid the ransom for his people. Those of you not sure, ransom, meaning we were held hostage by sin and despair. And he was like, look, they can't pay this so I'm going to pay it. And he sent his son, Yeshua, to die on the cross for our sins. He paid the debt which we owed. He brought the balance to zero. Glory to God. He ordered his covenant kept forever. He's so personal and holy, worthy of our respect. Yahweh desires to be intimate and personal. Are you okay with God getting in your business? He does it anyway. I mean, he knows all things. <laughs> He's everywhere at the same time. But it's a whole nother thing to have a relationship with the father where you open your heart up to him. And you say, God, it's okay for you to get in this part. Understanding that it's not my will, but thy will be done. That's everything. Because God, I know some of y'all can vouch. He ain't going to handle it the way that you would have handled it. He not going to say it the way you might have said it. <laughs> God's going to be God. But are you willing to stretch yourself and trust him with your most intimate matters? secrets 
with the understanding that everything he touches, it has a guarantee to last. Understanding that he loves you so much that he paid a hefty price that you may have freedom and deliverance. So he's already invested. We have the hardest time trusting God. I'm talking about me as well. We have the hardest time trusting God with the most intimate matters of our lives because we forget what came before that moment. We forget. All the stuff we just read, all the scripture that we just read, we forget all about all of that. We forget that God came through before. We forget that his promises are true. We forget that he's able to do the, the impossible. We forget that, that he's guaranteed to work it out in a way that is honoring to him and that keeps me out of a ditch. We forget all that. We drop the ball on trusting him with the next thing. Man. Can you trust him with the most intimate matters of your life? I just told somebody, I was like, yo. <laughs> I trust God. I do. I trust God a lot. I trust God a lot. But sometimes I find myself becoming fearful. I find my faith wavering. And I ask the question, God, I know you can do it. I know your miracles are memorials to you. I know you brought me out of things before. I know. So I'll rehearse all of this. I know. I know this, Lord. I know this, Lord. I know this, Lord. But God, two questions. I'm not sure when you'll do it. And I'm not sure if you'll do it again for me. I know you can. I sing it. You move mountains. You cause the walls to fall. All that good stuff. Great. But in the moment of my challenge, when I'm up against the wall, I find my inner man asking the question, but God, will you do it for me? God, will you do it this time? I know you did it last time, but will you do it this time? Because it's taking you a long time. It's taking you a while to come through, Lord. It seems like you're not hearing me. We were praying, my friend said to me, she says, Siobhan, I want you to know you're not lost. God has not lost you. And I said, thank you. Because I needed to hear that again. When you have committed to God to do great feats for him and you're out and you're out of your comfort zone and you're trusting him for the impossible, there are moments when you may feel like God has lost track of where I am. But this text reminds us, no, he hasn't lost track. He's right on top of it. It's guaranteed to work out the way he said it would work out. He's close 
The word says he's near to the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. He's married to the backslider. That speaks of how great the magnitude of God's love that you can't do nothing or go far enough away. You can't sin enough. You can't run enough. You can't cuss enough to get away from God's love. Mm -hmm. The moment you encounter his love, it begins to wash you. Next thing you know, you're changing. Your family memories and your friends are saying, man, I noticed you, your temperament's a little different. You, you talk a little different. You, you look different. And your response can be, I let God into my intimate space. I figured out he was worthy of my respect. worthy he's worthy mm -hmm. of our respect and our honor mm -hmm. the good life begins in the fear of God the other version says um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom Respect God, honor him. The fear of the Lord, to fear God is not to be afraid of him like he would bring harm to you. It is to honor him. Mm -hmm. To hold him in high esteem. To recognize that he's greater than anything or anyone in your life, including you. He's not bound to your thoughts or to your boundaries. God is able to do whatever he wants. It says, when I begin to recognize that he's greater than anything else and I hold him in that esteem, man, now I'm beginning to walk in the good life. <laughs> Now I'm beginning to see what God desired for me the whole time. He says, do that and you'll know the blessing of God. It is human nature to raise our thoughts higher than God. It's human nature to think that we got a pulse on all of this thing called life that we know. I remember my mama used to say um, all the time, like, um, that's just common sense. And there's a, a virgin in the version of the Bible. And it says that common sense comes from God. I realize everybody don't have common sense. Well, I, as I say, common sense ain't common. To mm. everyone. And when you understand how great God is, mm -hmm. that's when you begin to live life. That's when you begin to experience the blessing of God. The stuff is not the blessing. The house isn't the blessing. Y'all have heard me say that many times. The new job is not the blessing. The new car is not the blessing. The blessing is knowing that God is greater and he can handle anything that my life may bring. That's the blessing. Everything else is a tool. That God has given you to use to point people straight to him. says his hallelujah lasts forever. The way I digest that is when I get all of this in my in my heart and my mind and I really really am able to write this on the tablet of my heart meaning I live by it every day 
then the hallelujahs for God, they'll be forever. I won't be able to stop giving him praise and glory and honoring him, which takes me right back to the beginning of the verse. Giving endless thanks. If I, if I can get this in my system, ladies, if we can get this in our hearts and digest it, don't just pass it by, meditate on it both day and night, then your thanks will be continuous. As Virginia says, man, I'm not often out of words, but, but I don't have no words. No, I, I got words. My words are thank you, God. I give you glory, Lord Jesus, for it. Even though it seems like it is something that's not going to work out for me, I thank you that I'm able to see that you're higher than this. You're greater than that over there. The enemy can't bring anything against me because there's no weapon formed that shall prosper. I don't care what they're saying about me because you've given me a promise that I can condemn every word spoken against me in judgment because it's my righteous inheritance through Christ Jesus. He's equipped us. He's blessed us beyond measure with the gift of him. God is the gift. Mm -hmm. God is the best part of life. I don't care what they're saying. God is the best part of life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Anybody want to add anything to that? I want to share some promises from the scripture and just speak them over you all tonight before we leave and before we pray. Like I said, very simple text. Don't take a whole lot of explaining. I just wanted you to allow the word of God to breathe upon you. And you take this time, we take this time to absorb what is before us in the precious gift of our God? Anybody want to add anything? Any highlights? Something that stick, stuck out to you? Yeah, two things. I love your story about your grandma. Um, the, it, was, it was beautiful and I think, um, I hope that's true of me. It, it encourages me just to hide God's word in my heart more. I love his word and I love to memorize his word, but it's a beautiful um, kind of thought that hmm. while lots of great things have happened in our lives, you know, lots of not great things have happened in our lives too. And how amazing, like if, all that's left in our minds and in our hearts is God's word. That's a beautiful thought um, to me. So I loved that story uh, of your grandma. And I hope uh, that's true of me as well at my old age. But I also too love um, all his products are guaranteed to last. Um, mm. That that part is wow in so many different areas of yeah. my life. I can, I want to just claim that promise, you know, prayers that I've prayed um, since before my children were born um, to know that he's heard them and I've laid them at his feet and he has it and they're his, they're his products and they're guaranteed to last. So that is an encouragement to, you know, so those two things were encouraged. You know, all of it was beautiful and encouraged my heart, but those two things stuck out to me. Yes. Yes, man. Just hearing you say it, hearing someone else say that all his products are guaranteed to last. Some of y'all need to write that down. Yeah. Put it on your wall, put it in your room, put it in your bathroom. 
Some of y'all need to say that over yourself right now. Things may be looking crazy. Remind yourself that all God's products are guaranteed to last. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Any other highlights? Anything stuck out to you tonight? Um, one thing that did stick out to me was the, um, like keeping up my end of it. Um, cause God always, um, he's all, he, he will always provide, he will always, um, be true and just really just keeping myself accountable and really being obedient with God. Um, and also, um, when you spoke about like crying for no reason, <laughs> Um, I was like, "Ooh, you calling me out?" I know you weren't calling me out, but you know, <laughs> um, that's that's one thing. Like, I know it's okay to cry, but it's just been so many times where I just cried for no reason, you know, mm -hmm. knowing that you know he he's gonna work it out. He mm -hmm. always is gonna work it out, and there's really no need to worry. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's no need to worry. Yep. And we all have those moments, man. We all have those moments. I, I um, y'all know I have these little stories and analogies or whatever, but I remember the Lord saying to me, he says like, you sit in that chair and you don't check it. You just walk into a room, you know, you want a seat and you sit in it. You don't know that manufacturer. You don't know. They didn't have a guarantee stamp that it was going to hold your weight. They have nothing on there. You ain't got no relationship with them. Nothing. No, they didn't have no vouch. Now, ain't nobody tell you, man, these are good chairs. But you walk right in and you plopped all of your weight upon that chair. And you expected it and trusted that it would hold your weight. Cast all your weight Upon me, he said. Mm -hmm. I'm already proven. The scripture says he's guaranteed. He got mm -hmm. a good track record. Cast all your weight upon him. It's almost like set it and forget it. Like the crock pot. Like just put it in there. You don't check the crock pot every five minutes. You put your food in it. You turn it on and you go to work. And when you come home, you expect to have a fully cooked meal ready mm -hmm. to eat, ready to enjoy. That's God. Take your situations, take your troubles and your struggles, take your fears, put them in the hands of God and walk away. Oh, <laughs> And don't come back. Trust that he's going to prepare a meal and a plan and a way that is going to cover the moment. That he's going to handle it. He's going to take care of it. That's a different way to think about it. That's a God great don't way need help. What you say, Virginia? I said, that's a great way to think about it, <laughs> but, uh, I, but I know that that's a, that's a struggle that I have and, and you have to be honest with yourself to know that that's a struggle that you have and that sometimes we become impatient and we just want to, we pray about it and we get it and we say we put it in his hands and then all of a sudden we haven't we don't even realize that we've let it that we haven't let it go and we're running with it. Yep. And then you find yourself blaming him because it you because it didn't work out the way it was supposed to work out, the way you wanted it to work out. He were the way you wanted it to work out. Yeah. Yes. But you know what? That's the best part. God already knows you can't do it. 
That's one of those things for some of us where it's like, without him, it's impossible. But with him, all things are possible. But are you willing to do your part? That means every morning I got to get up sometimes every moment, sometimes every second, and I got to keep casting that thing. Cast means to throw with all of your strength and your might. I got to cast it upon him. To me, this text lays that out. It says, start with thanksgiving. Start with giving him thanks and praise for how he's already brought you out of it and through it. That's not superficial. That's not blocking it out like some people do. Well, I'm just going to put a praise on it. No, we ain't talking about that. I'm saying praise God for who he is. For what he is, has already shown you he's capable of. If you can't see what he's capable of in the moment that you're in, then go back and reflect on what he's done before. And allow that to fuel you to release your grip. To give you the strength to let fear go. Practical 101. Sometimes I have to I have to sit when I know that I'm like, I can feel the tension in my shoulders and I'm not sure what's going on, you know, everybody may not, you know, be able to admit when they're afraid of things, but you kind of know it because you start getting short tempered. You start tripping, <laughs> somebody say something, and you jump off the ledge, you know. It really is about becoming sober. Mm. And being able, like you said, admit it. But you got to admit that to you and then admit it to God. And the moment you say, man, that right there kind of scares me. That kind of trips me out. Man, God, I'm a little bit afraid of this. And mm. I'm trying to let it go. And I'm trying to give it to you, Lord. Help me to let it go. I don't want to try anymore. I want to let it go. That might not that might not quite work. I could feel a little bit of tension released from me after I pray, but but I still feel a little uncertain. My next step is I'm calling one of my sisters. Yo, Reva, this is what I'm struggling with today. Can you pray with me? Because the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. The word says, confess your sins one to another that your soul might be saved. That is real. Hey, Reva. Hey, Stephanie. I'm struggling today with this. What does that do? I'm not exposing myself. I'm one, uncovering the vulnerabilities that I have so the enemy can't try to expose me and catch me off guard in an area that I wasn't ready for. No, I'm good. I'm going to expose myself. I don't care. Because honesty covers all that. And then the love of God that, that Stephanie and Reva have is going to cover me and it's going to heal me. And we're going to walk to it, through it together. So when they see me in my next moment, man, I'm tripping. I'm a little nervous. They're going to say, hey, 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 accountability. Accountability. Remember, Siobhan, we're not going to be we're not going to trip off this. I understand it's fearful. I understand where you are, but let's go to our father together. Because his love cast out all fear. We take hold of that fear right now in the name of Jesus and we give it to God. Father, we pray for your peace that you will cover us now. You said you'll keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you. I'm giving y'all practicality right now. I'm demonstrating how this is supposed to work so that you can stop being tormented, challenged in this area in your life. Stop letting fear overtake you to the point where you can't obey God. Y'all already know I, I, how I feel about New Year's resolutions. I'm like, forget that. Be honorable before God. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. God, I am going to hand it over to you. 
That's an active practice every day, every moment of the day. I'm going to hand it over to you. My first step in handing it over to you, God, is I'm going to take out the word try. I'm trying to hand it over to you. No, God, I'm going to hand it over. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand it over to you, Lord. In that same moment, I find myself picking it back up. God, forgive me. I picked that thing back up. I'm handing it over to you, Lord. Not my will. Thy will be done. I'm handing it over to you. This is what this looks like. Because it's not enough just to read the scriptures and you have no idea how to apply to your life every single day. God has provided his word that we may win in this life and be able to access the life that's to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to get this. Mm -hmm. If it was impossible, he would have never put it in here for us to do it. So that means that we can do it. We can trust him with our whole hearts we can become get to a place where we're no longer wavering back and forth in our faith tossed to and fro like a ship without a sail we can make ourselves confident if we anchor in Christ and if you find yourself constantly tossed then maybe you got to go back and look and say am I actually anchored because anchoring looks different It brings about a different result. When you're anchored, you can't be moved. When you're anchored, nobody can pull you off course. When you're anchored. Some of us might need to say right now, God, I, I want to anchor myself in you. I want to anchor myself in you. Not my will, thy will be done. Hallelujah. I want to read these scriptures over you guys. If no one else has anything else they want to share, some of the promises. And you guys can look these up yourself. Um, some of you may not know all of the scriptures or where to find them. Basics 101. We're going we're gonna to confess it together and say, this time I am going to grow. This time I'm going to mature in my faith. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to get what God has for me. You literally can put into Google promises of God in the scripture. That's why I did it this way. Right here on my phone. Y'all can't see my phone. God's promises is what it says in the Bible. Say worst case scenario, you can't think of nothing God has done for you in a day. Put in your Google, God's promises in the Bible. And it's going to give you scriptures. And you're going to begin to read them and read them over, over yourself because there's no way that you can stand in this dark age and it is getting darker. He said that it would without understanding the promises of God for your life. And if you don't know the promises of God for your life, then everything that we just went over today, it's, it's like it goes over your head. Because the first thing, I don't have nothing to be thankful for. but you don't know what he said he would do. So you don't know if it was done or not done. All right. I'm telling y'all moving forward, we pushing in a little bit harder, a little bit more. It's important for us to grow. Isaiah 41, 10. 
So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's a promise of God. That's one of those that I will pull out when I find myself afraid. And I will read it over myself. I don't have to be afraid for he is with me. I don't have to be dismayed. I don't have to be sad about what's going on in my life for I am his child and he is my God. Isaiah 26, three, another promise says he will keep you in perfect peace. Those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in him. He'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed upon him. Deuteronomy 31, 8. He will never leave you. He will not leave you or forsake you. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. That's Deuteronomy 31, 8. I'm going to read a couple more. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. That's comforting to me, man. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 32, eight. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. That's like a warm kiss on my cheek that the God of the entire universe has his eye on me. He has his eye on you. That means he's watching you. Not just watching you to condemn you. He's he got, he already knew what you would do. He knows us. He knows how many hairs upon our heads. He knows all of that. He's watching you with his loving eye so that he can counsel you. Not sure which way to go? God, your loving eye is upon me. and You said you would counsel me. I need your instructions and your guidance. That's what that looks like. That's what that looks like. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Reba. If anyone wants um, some of those scriptures, just let me know. I I can forward, forward that to you. What guys. was the last one, Siobhan? I was trying. And then, of course, what was the last one? I have um, Deuteronomy 31.8. Psalms 32.8. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. I just wanted to read some of those over you guys. And I realized some of you have never really heard the promises of God. You may not know exactly what the Lord has already put in place for your success. In this walk called faith. God desires for us to win, ladies. 
Life is hard enough. So he's put things in place that you may remain in peace, that you may be able to do what he's purposed for you to do. These are just a few of God's promises, but there's so many in his word that if you take time and read them and write them upon the tablet of your heart, stop rushing through, but meditate on them both morning and night. They will begin to feed your soul. They will make you strong. The Bible says you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You won't run dry. Some of you are dry right now. You're living on fumes. And you needed to hear tonight that God's eye is upon you and his promises. He's beyond 100% guaranteed. Everything that he does will last. Hallelujah. Father God, we're so thankful. I pray that the soil of our hearts would be such that every word that was spoken over us would take root. that it will not be choked out nor plucked out, but it would grow. It would grow, that it would reach down deep and it would grow and take hold and nourish every part of our system. Lord, we can feel the pressure. We can feel the pressures of life all around us. But Father, you said you would keep us in perfect peace. Help us not to look around. Help us not to be distracted, but to stay focused, oh God. Counsel us, Lord. Give us instructions so that we'll know which way to go. Please, oh Father. Father, I pray for each one of these ladies. I pray that you would continue to just mature us, Lord, in the things of the faith. Give us a desire to want to know more about your word, Lord. And help us to understand the truth. You are the truth. You're the manufacturer of truth, Father. So I pray that when we hear something that is not of you, or when we are presented with an idea that is counter to what your word has established for our lives, I pray, Father, that our very beings will become so uneasy and we will know that's not our Father talking to us. For you said, our, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger, they do not answer. So Father, when there is strange fire presented to us, oh God, I pray that you would be made strong in us that we'll be able to resist the fiery darts of the devil. We will not be taken off course. We will not be pulled down a tangent. Father, keep us, and I pray that you would make us potent, that in our communities, in our the lives of our families, that when we show up on the scene, they are instantly blessed because we have you inside of us. Father, we bless you, we glorify you, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, Deanna, Sheila wants to be on, but she is doing yeah. something tragic. Okay. Oh, okay. Her son had a car accident and broke his pelvic bone and his car caught on fire. 
He is a lie. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you do all things well. So we thank you, Lord, for sparing his life. We thank you, Lord, for touching him and being right there present. I pray, Father God, as we've been praying for the sequence of events to happen in the lives of our sons and our men and our husbands. Father, I thank you, Lord, for just creating a moment where you can begin to commune with Sheila's son. Father, I pray that this will be a time that he'll look back and say, this was the best time of my life because I encountered a living savior. I pray that his body would heal well and quickly according to your time, not our time. I pray that you would give Sheila patience that she may be able to serve and to pray and to speak the things that you have placed in her heart as it pertains to her son. Cover him, Father, and keep him. Thank you for saving him, and thank you for your deliverance. Your miracles are truly memorials, for this will be a memorial in his life of what you have done. So Father, we honor you for it and we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Yeshua, our Savior, we pray. Amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, ladies. Glory to God. Anybody got anything they wanna say or share before we jump off of here? Thank you, Charlotte, for joining us. So good to see you, Tosh. How's it going over there, honey? Thank you so much for the invite, Reva. I really enjoyed this. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you came, cousin. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad you came too, cousin. <laughs> Thank you. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Reva speaks so highly about you, and and I see why <laughs> you're great. Thank you so oh, much for that great you. word today, and thank you for praying over us. Absolutely. It is my pleasure and my honor. And I'm just grateful for all of you. I'm grateful for, man, what God is about to do in your life and what he is doing. Um, I am not a person when I'm talking about what God is doing or going to do. I'm not talking about superficial things, mm -hmm. but that's easy. Yeah. But God's doing something so deep in your hearts and in our hearts. Um, He's preparing us to present us to his father. What yeah. a blessing and what a gift. Yeah. What yeah. a blessing and what a gift. And he made that promise to say, hey, if we delight ourselves in him, he'll give us the desires of our heart. All the other things he'll add unto us. Mm -hmm. If we would seek his kingdom first. So I'm just pushing on us to seek his kingdom first, guys. And we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're growing and we're walking it out. Um, a few little announcements. Um, that was funny. Sound like that. But anyway, um, so I know that the holidays are coming up for um, the world. And I say it that way because I am not a person that celebrate um, the commercialism of the holidays. Okay. Um, those aren't my feasts nor my festivals. I don't participate. Um, in that manner. However, I posted some things in the chat. Um, Dr. Chris and Carol Green, who are um, pastors to my family, my husband and I through Fruitful Life Network, he always shared with us responses that we could have toward the Christmas holiday. Some of you are in the midst. God has already begun to reveal to you about Christmas, what it means about Halloween, all these things. Um, and I do get these calls like, oh my God, I don't think I'm supposed to celebrate that no more. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I'm like, relax, breathe. Um, it is a change. It is a challenge because we live in a world that is very commercial. Um, but we know that Christ came for us and he died on the cross for us. Um, if you look in the chat, um, Charlotte, if you would like to, Reva can connect you into our WhatsApp chat group. 
Yeah. Um, Allegra, you also may need to be added in the group. I'm not sure if you're getting the messages. Please let us know. Um, you can just put it in the chat if not, so Reba can add you into WhatsApp. Um, but that's where we put little posts, encouraging words, information. If Bible studies canceled, whatever's going on, it's in the WhatsApp chat group. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Allegra. Um, but I posted some things today. Um, I posted um the full worship um from Givers of Hope, which is my family, as you guys know. My boys were little at that time. Um, but I shared that. Please go watch it, man. It blessed my life so much today. And then I put in there about the, the holidays and, and what should be our response as kingdom citizens to our family members, um, our perspective about it. Um, what does the Bible say about it? Um, and so I want you guys to go check those things out. Um, if you got any questions, feel free to reach out and we can talk it through. Um, and just walk it out. It's a process, but we are peculiar people. Reva, did you get Taj's number? We are to be set apart. Um, yes. And so in that, there are certain things that God did lay out that his children are not supposed to be a part of and partake of. Um, we govern ourselves accordingly and we do our best to walk through it as he gives us the revelation. Um, as I've shared with others, we don't just condemn other people. Uh-uh, we're not doing no Christmas. I ain't doing this. That's not our place. Um, but as God gives us revelation, we walk through it with love. Um, even with our spouses or our children, we begin to, to just pray that all of our hearts, um, all of our hearts are open to the will of God for our lives. So go check those things out. If you guys don't have any other questions, um, or comments. Um, I speak blessings over you. I speak the peace of God upon you that as you go throughout the rest of your week, that the peace and grace of the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, and God, our Father, would, would cover you, that it would blanket you, that his mercy would be your pillow, that grace would be your cover. I pray that God would speak to you and give you wisdom that you would be that one that's at the beginning of wisdom because you've recognized that you got to fear God and you hold him higher than anything else in the whole wide world. Be different, be peculiar, be okay with standing out as long as you're doing the will of the father, keep doing what you're doing. And I believe God will meet you at every moment, at every turn and in every place and in every space. Blessings to you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. Catch my hug. Hold on. I got to grab my computer so it don't fall. Catch my hug and my kiss. I love y'all. Love a you. Actually, we love you too. Good night. Night. Reba, did you get the numbers? Oh, yes, I did. Okay, I got good. it. I, I messaged um, both Taj and Miss Virginia. Perfect. All right. Love you. Bye. Okay, thank you guys. Okay.